Welcome to the learning video series Extending Map Suite. Today we're going to talk about FDO, OGR, and GDAL, and we're going to learn how to integrate a variety of formats using those different open source libraries. So the agenda for today is to answer the following questions. What are FDO, GDAL, and OGR? Where do I find the formats they support? What licenses cover them? How do I access them through Map Suite? What files do I need to deploy? And what if I need a format that's not supported? We're also going to review a sample project using a number of different formats and answer any additional questions that you might have. So we're going to take a high level look at FDO, GDAL, and OGR. And in a nutshell, they're open source libraries to support uh, various data formats, GIS data formats. And they were developed around the single idea of providing a, an abstract API to access a whole bunch of different formats. Because as everyone's dealt with, there's lots of different GIS formats out there. And sometimes you have to use very specialized DLLs to access them. They wanted to provide you know, one-stop shopping as far as one API. And one thing to note is that we offer many native implementations of formats that they support. So you're going to see, for example, that maybe uh, OGR, for example, might support Shapefile. But we have a native implementation of Shapefile that's going to be much faster because as they try to bring everything under one API, they don't necessarily have kind of the best in breed reader or writer for all the different formats. Also, it's important to note that these are native C++ libraries. Um, whether that's good or bad for you, you know, it all depends. The one thing that makes it a little bit difficult for C++ developers is it's, it's harder to debug those and troubleshoot issues that you have in them. Uh, the other thing is it's more difficult to call them as there's very limited .NET wrappers for them. And that's where kind of FDO comes in, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But they're native libraries, and we're packaging them up uh, really to make it convenient for you to use. In Map Suite, they ship as extensions because there's a whole bunch of dependencies. And uh, if we were to take a look real quick, basically under the System32 folder, we have a Map Suite FDO Extensions x86 folder. And if we look in there, here are all the different dependencies that that it, um, FDO, GDAL, and OGR have. And so it's pretty massive, and uh, it's I, I think it's really nice that we packaged all that up for you because it's, it's kind of a pain to get everything to work right and uh, compiled up. And as I mentioned, they you know require you to have certain files in the System32 directory. And we support them as best we can, considering they're third-party libraries. And we have, you know, went into the code and made changes and fixes. However, you always have to remember it is a third-party library. It's always better to kind of go upstream and to, you know, petition uh, the various uh, different libraries themselves to make changes, and then we can get them downstream. So I just wanted to bring that up. So we're going to talk about FDO first. And FDO stands for Feature Data Object. It was originally developed by Autodesk, and there's a nice history of FDO actually out on their uh, out on the website that hosts FDO. The goal was to have one common interface for a number of different spatial formats, uh, just like I was uh, was as I was talking about before. It's released under the LGPL, so as long as you compile it and you just link to it, uh, you're good there. And I have the home page listed here, and there's also a link to the providers. We can actually pop up their home page. And here's the home page for FDO. It has a history, has a different providers overview, as you can see. So a number of providers. But a couple of the key ones are this GDAL and OGR. And those are actually separate libraries that themselves their mission was to be a single API to access a whole bunch of different formats. Um, while OGR and GDAL have have kind of weak uh, C, I mean uh, C sharp wrappers, 
FDO's uh, C sharp wrapper is actually pretty good, so we decided to use that as kind of our gateway um, to OGR and GDAL. So uh, whenever we want to use a format that's under OGR or GDAL, we're actually calling through FDO to call into that. So that's our, our gateway support for OGR and GDAL. <laughs> GDAL stands for Geospatial Data Abstraction Layer, and it was released uh, by the Open Source Geospatial Foundation. It has a number of different formats that it supports. It mainly focuses on raster formats uh, such as satellite imagery, um, elevation data, stuff like that. It's released under a, a lot more liberal uh, XMIT style license which means that you can you can take the code, you can close source it, you can compile it and ship it without source, whatever you'd like to do. You can take pieces of the code. Um, and I list the home page for it and its supported formats as well. And, um, and I'd kind of already mentioned that it specializes really in raster formats. And if we go ahead and look at, at uh, here's their website. And uh, just talks all about GDAL. And if we look at the GDAL raster formats, it has a number of different formats here. Now it's interesting to note here these ones that are compiled by default because those are most likely the ones that we have co uh, compiled in there and there's some other ones that need additional libraries but like for example um, let's see let me try to find one here like here JPEG 2000 so it needs the ECW SDK but we have a native implementation of JPEG 2000 so a lot of the more popular ones we're gonna have native implementations that are gonna be a lot better so always look for those in the core libraries first uh, and then if you can't find anything there, then, you know, look over to, to the extension. Okay. And OGR, actually, uh, it's a part of GDAO. Um, and it's it, it also had the, the theme of having one common interface. But on this side, it's for vector formats. It's also released under the XMIT style license, and if you notice, even from the URL, OGR looks like it's a, a subset of GDAL, and it has uh, its own list of, of formats that it uh, supports. And one thing to note is that uh, many of the libraries are not compiled in by default. Now, if you happen to have libraries that you need, um, we can look into recompiling with those additional DLLs. I think the reason is is that this particular project, the OGR and GDAL, they wanted all of their stuff to be released under um, an XMIT style license, and I think some of the additional libraries aren't under those licenses, so I think they're a little more strict, so you have to compile those in uh, yourself if you want to uh, link to them. And let's see that. So actually here's the OGR website and here are the formats that it supports and if you notice this compiled by default and so you know there's quite a few of them that uh, you know that are no that need some other library and if you run across those just let us know and we'll kinda do whatever we can to see if we can integrate that in All right, so now the big question is, how do I access them through MapSuite? And what we've done is we exposed this functionality as an extension assembly called FDO extension. And you'll find that under where you installed the product, under developer reference, spatial extensions, and then FDO extensions, or FDO extension. And there's an FDO extension DLL that you're going to need to reference in your project and that's going to come under the same uh, core map suite namespace and then you're also required to move this folder that's below the system 32 directory uh, and you're going to find it under the developer references system 32 and then it's called map suite fdo extension x86 and you actually need to move this directory under your system 32 it's not enough to, to go into here and copy the files in there we're actually specifically looking for this uh, in the 64-bit environment, I think we have a compile of these uh, that's 64-bit, uh, so it would be MapSuite FDO extension x64. 
So you need to copy those two things out. And then the classes that we expose is we have um, some classes like an FDO uh, feature source and an FDO feature layer. And that targets FDO at a high level. And as you'll see here in a little bit, FDO has a whole bunch of parameters that you pass into it. And based on those parameters, it knows kind of the, 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 uh, the data that you're going at and how to open it, etc. We also some, expose some classes that target OGR and GDAL directly. And those classes actually are going to inherit um, from the, the higher level FDO one. But they have a whole bunch of the parameters that are specific to OGR and GDAL just predefined for you. And what's nice about OGR and GDAL is that their libraries key off of the file name, the actual extension to know. So when we call something with FDO, I think there's four or five different strings that we have to pass into the constructor. Um, but in the derived classes for OGR and GDAL, there's only one, which is basically a, a path to, uh, to the file that you're, that you're looking for, and then it uh, figures everything else out. And then we also have some uh, some classes that target specific formats. So, for example, if there's a really popular format like tab, then we've actually just created, I think it's called a tab file feature source and a tab file feature layer. Um, and so, it, you know, so if you're looking for it in IntelliSense, you're just going to find it, and uh, and it's a little more intuitive than going to an OGR, you know, feature source. So. And we're going to take a look at that when we get into the coding section here. Okay, so what are the important classes? And we kind of touched on these already, and we'll just go through them rather quickly. We have the F FDO raster source and the FDO raster layer. And then there's an FDO uh, vector source and FDO vector layer. And so those are the classes that basically everything else inherits from. You can use those directly if you want, and we're going to show you an example of that. But everything else basically inherits from that and then makes it a little bit easier, adds a little value on top of it. Uh, we also have the GDAL raster layer and the GDAL, uh, GDAL raster source. And these target the GDAL formats with an easy to use interface. It inherits from the FDO raster source. We have the OGR feature layer and OGR feature source. And they're targeted for those OGR vector formats with an easy to use interface. And they also inherit from the FDO uh, vector source. I think it's FDO feature source instead of vector on there. I missed, uh, mistyped that. We also have the targeted classes, things like the S57 feature layer, the SDF feature layer, tab file, personal geodatabase feature layer, etc. And we can add additional classes as you guys request them. So if there's uh, other classes that you'd like to actually see a named version of, you know, just let us know. We tried to do kind of the most popular ones and the ones that we had data for. But quite frankly, there's so many different data formats, we don't even have test data for every format. And most of the time, in our experience, um, our customers are used to using a particular data format. And so you know, they can usually supply a sample to us, and then it doesn't take very long for us to get that integrated in. So what if you need a format that's not uh, currently supported in uh, the FDO, uh, GDAL, and, and OGR? Well, you can petition them directly. Uh, to include your format. Now that can be kind of a time-consuming process, but it's definitely an option, and you can make you know the, their uh, offering a little bit better. Um, you can also integrate your format using Map Suite, and I recommend checking out the video in the developer blog, extending Map Suite, integrating custom data formats, because it's actually not that difficult to do if you know uh, what your data format is and you know how to access it. That's definitely a, a viable option, and we've had lots and lots of customers integrate custom data and be very successful and happy with that and then you can control everything from um, you know performance uh, considerations you know all the way down to you know how you actually implement it uh, yourself um, and and we recommend that um, that you post any of your questions or requirements to the discussion forums as we have people manning those and they will pass back any information uh, to the developers on what you guys are looking for and uh, and what kind of formats you you'd like to see. So we're just going to talk about the sample code overview before we jump into that, and we're going to show some OGR formats being implemented. We're going to show some GDAL formats, and we're going to show how we actually created uh, kind of a wrapper 
to wrap one of the FDO, I think FDO vector or FDO feature sources um, to to actually be a little easier to use. So, so let's look at some code. Uh, you can find the code that we're going to review in a zip file accompanying the video on thinkgeo.com. I think more specifically, it's in the under the discussion forums, the developers blog. And it's going to require that you have installed a fuller evaluation edition of, of any of the Map Suite O products. And we're going to be using the Map Suite Core DLL that ships with all those products. And you're going to need to add that as a reference to the project. It might already be there. We might ship an evaluation, but you can always, um, you know, if you have a, a full version, you can always reference that as well. All right, let's take a look. Here we are with the code and let's go ahead and run this just to give you an idea what this looks like and then we'll take it function by function. Alright so there's a test form here and with these buttons we can load different data formats so this one's going to load arc info binary grid and we can uh, we can zoom around in it zoom in and out we also have this uh, uh, ASCII demography stuff from USGS. And we can zoom in, zoom around in it. It's also military elevation data, as you can see here. And then we have tab files three different ways. And one way is going to be, that they actually look the same, but one way is going to be actually using the tab class that we've created. The other one is going to be using an OGR, and the third one is going to be using the FDO one directly, because in effect, the um, at the end of the day, actually, it all goes through OGR uh, through FDO, and so we've just had some different levels of wrapping uh, to kind of show you how you can wrap it and, and make the interface a little bit nicer. And then finally, we have a geodatabase here. move around in. All right, so this isn't going to take very long. Let's go ahead and, and look at it here. All right, so this is the arc info binary grid button that loads this. And the first thing we're going to do is clear the layers. You're going to see this code coming up over and over again for all the different buttons. And then we create a GDAL raster layer and if you look at the parameters, there's only one parameter, which is the actual file name of the uh, of the image that you want to show. So that's relatively simple. Uh, we we open it, we get its bounding box. That's how we set the current extent, and then we go ahead and add it to the map, and and we draw. So you're going to see this over and over again as we go to the different formats. If we go down a little bit further, here's that USGS data. And it's the same thing. We create a GDAL raster layer, and we just feed in the file name, and we're good to go. So that's what's really nice about GDAL, is that it's very, uh, very straightforward. Here we have that military elevation data. It's the same thing. It's this DT1. We just pass that into the GDAL raster layer, and we're good. The geodatabase gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, and here we have a class for it, uh, the personal geodatabase feature layer. And we've created this specifically for the, the personal geodatabase, but I believe in the it actually just calls into an OGR layer uh, underneath, but we've just made a class that specifically wraps it. And here you pass in what your uh, database is, the, the MDB, and it looks like there's some parameters, an ID column, we didn't put that in, we don't really need it here. The feature schema, um, I'm not exactly sure what this is. It, it varies for different uh, kinds of databases. I'm not sure in this particular case. And then the feature class name is, is the actual database name. And I think what we need to do is, since this is really specific to the personal geodatabase, we should go and rename these parameters. Instead of being you know, feature class name, it should just be database name or table name, uh, just to make it more straightforward. And, um, and the same thing with schema name. But you set it up almost the same, and here we actually have to set some styles because it's it's a uh, it's feature, it's vector based, and then we get all of its uh, get its bounding box and display it. 
And here we have the next three samples are going to be with that tab file. And I was saying that we do it a couple different ways. This one's using the tab feature layer. And in this particular case, if you look at it, we only have two different parameters. We can take a look at that. And it is the path name and then the column, uh, the ID column name. So in this particular case, it's FID. And we specify the tab, uh, tab file. So that's really straightforward, and then you just set up, you know, your different uh, styles to to display it. So that's really easy. And then we have tab the second way. This is using kind of the highest level FDO feature layer. And here, if you notice, we actually have to pass in uh, quite a few more things. And the the actual uh, definition of all these parameters actually maps back to FDO. So uh, you can actually go and download FDO and they have kind of a, a neat little explorer where you can um, attach the different data formats and they have kind of a simple viewer and you can use that to uh, to see what these different what these different parameters mean and we actually just use the same uh, parameter names so here we have the provider name in our case it's uh, it's OGR um, but there's a list of the of these like OSGO dot and then GDAL is one, OGR is one, and there's uh, different ones and you can find that on their website. And then you have to specify a data source and right now we're opening it for read only. And here we're specifying the data source as this uh, tab file. Then we also have the column ID name, the feature schema name, the feature class name, which looks uh, identical to the file name without the tab, and then the geometry column name uh, which we have is geometry but these are all really specific to the different formats and so you'd have to find those uh, in the uh, FDO definition for those so that's kind of the mo more complicated one and that's why we've written different wrapper classes just to hide you from some of those parameters that you don't need to see and the third way we've actually created an OGR feature layer and this OGR feature layer basically just allows us to pass in um, just a couple different uh, parameters but not the entire uh, parameter set that you saw in the other one so we still have to pass in the tab file the column name um, not sure what this one is the feature schema name and then this feature class name and then geometry <laughs> so but if I were you know using tab files I would use you know this first one it basically just allows you to, to pass in these two items and uh, and you're done and then really the rest of the code is just um, just some plumbing work like the draw image and, and clearing the layers um, so that's pretty much it um, you know FDO if, you know if you have some data that you really or with FDO OGR and GDAL if you have some data formats that are listed under the formats and there's a good chance we can get it working whether it's going to work hundred percent out of the box um, it's just going to take a little bit of research into you know what the different strings are there but you can always post to the forums uh, and you can always contact our support and uh, and we can help you uh, we can help you with that what we also included in here were some some wrapper classes just to give you an idea of how we wrapped it so here is a, the tab feature layer um, actually, in the in the FDO extension itself, we have a tab file feature layer and a tab file feature source, and and basically this is just the code out of it. Uh, we just renamed it to remove file from it, so we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't run into each other. But if you look at the actual feature layer itself, it's it's uh, pretty bare. Basically, it's just the constructor that takes the path file name, the ID column, and then it creates the feature source inside of here and uh, and passes those in then it also has a um, it also has a, a public uh, method I mean a public property for the path file name and actually it should have a um, another property for the ID column name so that was a little blunder there Let's see if we look into the tab feature source basically it's not all that complicated either um, but what it does is it inherits from the FDO feature source so that's that more complicated one and when you pass in the file name and the ID column into the constructor it actually calls into the base to the more complicated constructor 
And so here it specifies that you know we know it's OGR because it's tab. We know kind of what the what the data source is. We'll pass in that path file name that you passed in as a parameter. We'll pass in that ID column. In this particular case, we can do uh, nulls all the way across there, and uh, and that's and that's fine. And uh, and then we have the the uh, the uh, property here as well, and we really should have another property for the uh, ID column name, but that doesn't seem to be there. Thanks for watching. For more videos, visit uh, gis.thinkgeo.com and more specifically, navigate into the discussion forums and check out the developer's blog. We have lots of articles in there and we also keep an archive of all the different videos that we've done. And if there are videos that you'd like to see, uh, please let us know. We'd be happy to, uh, to create uh, some content for it and uh, help educate uh, everyone on, on how to use the, the particular features. All right, thanks a lot and have a great day.